Okay, so when it comes to the topic of creating a do-it-yourself um, laminar flow hood, I've seen all sorts of unique concepts, and there's a few things that come to mind, and I know somebody's going to come up with a solution to all of them, and I've got a couple of suggestions. So, here are my thoughts. Number one, whenever I see somebody create them online, when they use something like this, what they do, and it's kind of unique, but they'll take a... Um, a filter and they'll put it at the base of a tub like this and they'll have some sort of fan now the thing is is that when they there's two problems that i noticed with this number one when they put a when they put a fan in something like that there tends to be like a central area where the fan is blowing so instead of using the entire um, filter it's using it's blowing through just one area but when it's blowing through just one area, what that does is it leaves a whole bunch of other areas to um, that are effectively you know, dead space. And we'll talk about why that's important. And the reason being is because when <clears throat> one of the guys who created uh, a, a homemade laminar flow hood did a really great job, but he did an interesting thing. He put um, some Petri dishes out here, put some in here, and then also put some up here to find out what the contamination rate was. And he found that this was obviously the worst, just sitting out, but that the ones inside were slightly more contaminated than the ones were outside. And there's actually a really good reason for that. And if you disagree, by all means, comment below and let me know what your thoughts are. But we're gonna go a couple places there. Number one is that if you're only blowing in one certain area, you've got a whole bunch of dead space. What happens is, is that you're gonna get some vortexes inside here. If this is blowing only through a small port here, you're gonna have dead space here that's gonna to wanna to move, gonna to wanna to do something, and that actually can have the effect of drawing air in to this area from the outside. So, <clears throat> now it also makes sense why the ones that were just outside of this were good because basically what happens is that while things are being drawn in, this is like your, your barrel for that air. So it's being pu pushed out this way and it will then dissipate. So that's that. So there's that. The other thing, the one of the big reasons why I have a problem with those ones is because you're, if you're using a, a filter that's, let's say, this size, what ends up happening is, is now you're only using a very small portion of it. And while you've got this huge filter, the benefit of like if you look at the laminar flow hoods, the professional ones that cost, you know, a thousand or more dollars, they're using a huge thing. They've got a huge plenum area behind it. So that what happens is you get equal pressure all the way through. So here's a concept. What if we took something like this and we'll go somewhere else in just a moment to but let's say we took this whole area, or maybe the laminar, the, the filter size is, you know, a little bit smaller than the base. And we put that in, and then we put, let's say, the lid for this on top, and that's where the fan was. What we now have, and let's say instead of going this way, okay, through it, it's now going this way, and we use the whole storage container, let's say, as a plenum area. So now what we're getting is through the, so, <clears throat> instead of having that working area inside, which you could do it the other way, but we're still, still gonna need a plenum area. Um, instead of having it where we're creating a, uh, you know, we're having to work inside this area here, when we know the best results are outside of that. We know the best results are outside of the, the chamber, okay? If we turned it around, put the fan in the lid and the, uh, and the filter at the bottom, and then we turn it around like this, and now we can work here, okay? And now, because this entire thing now becomes a plenum area to push, we get an equal filtration through. Now, we could have one, two, three, four, five fans, because this is a big area, whatever we need to get the adequate flow for a homemade, um, or whatever type of fan works, but for a homemade type of, of thing. Now, as I was thinking about this, and I'm building this, building this in my mind, I was like, hey, wait a second. Like a lot of people build laminar flow hoods in, um, they use cardboard boxes, they use all sorts of things. As long as the filter's on the outside, that's kind of the big, the biggest thing. So I was thinking, what happens? Because when we use something like this, and if we, if we use one of these and we set it down, what ends up happening is instead of this being flat towards us, it's now facing down. 
I don't know if that is good, bad, or if it should be facing up or whatever, um, but that creates items, you know, cons you know, potential concerns all on its own. So I was thinking, hey, you know what? We have a whole bunch of, of box manufacturers out there. Now what happened if we did the same type of thing, we took a box, okay, and we put, let's say, it's the, if you imagine like the filter box, let's say we're to, we're to purchase six HEPA filters of whatever size. Let's just imagine that they're really thick and that this would be six of them, okay? But now we take the box, okay? We put one HEPA filter down here, and then we take another box that's slightly smaller that will fit inside of this. Put that inside. So now, boom, we mount our fan here. Now we have this area for a plenum area. We have our filter here because there's always, you know, ceiling and things like that. Well, what happens if now this box <coughs> filters, or pardon me, is now pushed, uh, goes inside, pardon me, the second box goes inside of this box, creates a close enough of a seal because box, you know, I've seen boxes that are that closely sized together, creates th that kind of a seal where now here's our working area. And obviously this is not the size of the, of the HEPA filter that we're gonna want. We're gonna want something ideally like one by two. But the idea is that this could be a really simple concept. It could be really, I mean, even if it's, hey, you know what, you need to go out and purchase, you know, from like Home Depot or a package store or something like that, some generic size boxes where you go purchase them. And then what we're doing is we're getting shielding or, you know, you're selling a kit where it makes the inside of this, you know, uh, sterilizable or seal, sealable or whatever it is. These are some ideas for creating um, a home, uh, laminar flow hood that should ideally, if in an ideal world, of course, that should be very affordable. Um, so that being said, there's my ideas. I share them with the, you know, the home my, uh, mycology world and other areas that works with uh, such things, wants to work in front of a laminar flow hoods for, hey, what are these size boxes? What's, you know, flow rates that would work really well? Do you agree with the whole idea of having a plenum area so that you get equal distribution on the, um, on the filter as opposed to, you know, having a big filter and a small fan? Uh, so I'd love to see your comments below and I'd love to see what creations are made from this. That being said, make it a great day.